Alright, welcome back. This is M-Dog. Episode five and a half. <laughs> we got cut off there in the last one. And hey, it could happen again. I do, uh, I will say that there will be times that I will record these episodes when I'm not potentially getting interrupted by work. Um, but it's just, it's too good a time to try to get the episodes in when I am working. Um, I typically do have moments of at least 30 to 60 minutes free here and there so <clears throat> i will uh, continue to do that some okay so i'm guessing this is a perch i don't know let's see this is supposed to be a little rough spot i was gonna while i was waiting i had caught a few rough off this dock and uh, it looks like we are lucky on a nice little rough order here at mosquito so I was just going to show you what we're doing here real quick, but oh, it's a roach. It's a nice roach. Really nice roach, actually. So uh, let's do this then. I'm just curious. Roach mix. Let's go to a regular size hook. Um, six is a little confident. Let's do 14. And we'll stay with worm. I mean, heck, let's just try peas. We're just going to be here for another minute or two. Uh, let's just see what happens. So we are just standing behind this this dock right where you uh, kind of start here at Mosquito, and we are casting to the right. So trying to get it into like the very front of this four meter hole. At least that's the direction we're casting. Whether or not we're quite reaching it or not, I'm not sure. I'm full casting for the most part. We're not clipped. We're not clipped. We're just casting as far as we can get it. And uh, now that it's getting a little later in the day, we're probably catching less and less rough. But I was catching rough here. It's a little bit of a long cast compared to some of our other spots where we've been able to catch rough. But um, it's been a neat little spot. Yeah, there's a perch. That's kind of what you'd expect as the rough move out on worms. The, the perch might move in. Um, but yeah, we caught a few rough, a couple of white bream. I think it just kind of shows that, especially in the deeper spots, but perhaps all over... Uh, rough are not that hard to find at New Mosquito. They're pretty readily available, which is great because they certainly pay a lot of silver when you hit these little rough orders. Uh, which here's another one for 27 silver. Five little rough, 27 silver. Very nice. Nothing else we need to pay attention to. Uh, probably not. I was actually thinking maybe we would go try a little bit more bleak fishing at winding or fishing in the pond again at winding something at winding for a little while uh, it's middle of the day again I don't really want to fish in that crucian gibble spot here at mosquito middle of the day not knowing how long we'll be able to fish there now we might come back and fish it in the evening we'll see we'll see what that looks like All right, I think we have, uh, I think we've seen enough. We don't really need to keep any of these fish. It's not worth anything in any, any way, except for the common roaches a little bit. Um, so we're up to 137 on silver. And we wanna keep on digging. 8.7. Let's head over to winding just for a little bit. Let's check the cafe there and see what we can do in terms of maybe just a little bit of bleak fishing. Very easy rough order. These are kind of like smaller rough orders, right? We are starting to build up the red worm so eventually we might be able to do a little bit of red worm fishing here. Yeah, let's just try maggots here. Um, really small hooks and maybe um, maybe blood worm on this one I 
with uh, roach mix on there. Let's just see if we catch anything in this spot off of feeders. But what we really want to do is try this. Really shallow. Let's see. Dace. This should be a pretty good little spot to level up float when it's active like this. Fish after fish. It's a marker as well. That's what we want to see. See what's biting on our maggots. That's what you would hope to see. Very nice. So we're getting bleak off feeder and float. That's pretty cool. All right, let's check over here a little bit farther down kind of casting from right here. Let's see how the bite rate's down here. See if it's just as active. Cast that a little farther than I intended. Ooh, a quick bite though. We need to dig, by the way. Let's see if we can go a little closer. Still get a good bite rate. Yep, pretty good. Ooh, I like it. Nice, healthy, bleak. So kind of between 50 and 60% might work just fine. Oh man, we're getting really nice bleak here right now. So, let's see what we catch on this. We might want to go full maggots, because uh, I think that got a perch. Yeah, let's go full maggots here. About a 50% cast. See if we got two for two on, on bleak. I think we did. Yep. So this is obviously be even better if we had a cafe order, which we don't. But these are not these are not bad silver. I mean, this is going to add up, especially this size. I mean, that's you know five silver right there, just between two little bleak on float. So it's not the best silver in the world, but I am starting to wonder like. During the daytime, when we're getting all, when mostly we're just going to get like smaller, and we're just going to get smaller accretions and stuff, might it be worth coming over here? As long as there's an active bleak spot, especially if you have any interest at all in level up, leveling up float fishing. I like getting that very gentle soft pull. That one I over pulled a little bit. So if it goes down that far, does the bite rate stop? That's the question. Or will it still catch something down here? It's not looking promising. So we want it to be a little farther up. Let's check our feeders. Huh. 
Want to catch a nasty perch or something? No, nope, must be a little chub. Chub do like the maggots. Chub also like the mag maggots, but that's okay. We'll catch a few chub. We're using small enough hooks that we probably won't get burnt too bad on the chub, size-wise. I guess we need to figure out like what an actual clip is for this. That might be helpful. So I think we want to cast back left a little bit and then let it come right in front of us. Just a little soft, gentle pull, and then pull it in. And then we, if we move back up a little bit, we maybe catch a variety of dace and bleak. But it's kind of nice to just hit the bleak. Like it. Of course, for higher level players, this ends up becoming an interesting spot to possibly get bait fish size bleak to go for bellows or other fish. Ooh, look at that dace. Oh, it's a little chub. Never mind. Thought that was going to be a big boy dace. This is the killer when you get these times of not getting a bite. Definitely slows your uh, slows your catch rate down. All right, so let's just try like a nine, ten meter clip, ten meter clip right in front of us about right to me. Ten meter. I mean most of the damage we're doing on bleak is gonna be on float, but if you occasionally get a marker on on feeder as well then it's probably a good probably worthwhile to have them out. much easier to float fish with multiple rods for bleak when there's not a current 
which is why my favorite spot to fish for bleak here is up in the pond because you can put three float rods out and just catch a lot of bleak per hour it's not very very nice Oh, goodness. I was about to give up on it and then had another fish. Nibble it. Yeah, we are on the bleak right now. I don't know if it's better down here or better up at the top. I mean, or we're better further down off the shore. We were getting a mixture of dace up here, but. We'll start like here. That's a nice one. bad. That's not a bleak. Eleven silver. I don't know. Without flies, it's hard to say. With flies, it'd probably be totally worth it to bleak fish. Uh, it's worth it if you're wanting to level up float fishing. If you're not wanting to level up float fishing, it's harder to say. Like, is it worth it or not? So we're getting a second 24 hook. We're gonna get a couple of these 3.2 liters and. We're going to go get set up at Mosquito. See if we can't get a full night of um, Crucian Gibble fishing in. times are so good. Just not a lot we care about at the moment. It's been a bit of an unlucky day on cafe orders besides that like uh, free rough order we got. Should have brought some more bought some more bread. We'll do it next time, I guess.
That spot also looks good. But that's not the spot. I mean, doesn't it look like this would be just as good? Basically fishing the same area. Forgot to put the uh, new leader on. It is slightly different. Maybe it won't work, but. I really despise how in the bushes we are on that other spot. Although I'm not used to waiting this long for a bite here, so I'm starting to wonder. Okay, promising. Okay, Let's see what uh, interesting questions we've had on our previous videos. So in episode one, Kip Kip says, I'm not even a new player, but still these kind of vids are really enjoyable to watch. Well, thanks. I'm glad they're enjoyable. Uh, Cursed Meme, similar. I'm not a new player, but hyped for this new series. Um, <laughs> Kenesai says, I'm still watching the last leveling series because I've only been playing for a couple months. Now I can watch two series at once. And I guess this is, I think right when New Mosquito came out, we started a leveling series. We didn't take it very far, but we did start one. So this is actually the second time we've done leveling stuff at New Mosquito. I think the first time though, it was new and the fair was going on. So a lot of what we ended up doing was we were kind of distracted by the uh, Christmas fair. Arn says, uh, that was good. I was waiting for a new episode. I'm level 26 now. Just bought some carp gear. Very nice. Always a fun transition when you get to the point where you can start going after carp. For new players, that is a long way off. Sometimes it's hard to enjoy the lower level stuff uh, because if you start watching streamers and whatever, we, of course, do a lot of carp fishing and more advanced fishing, and you just want to get there as soon as you can, but you got to try to enjoy the low level stuff. This is definitely where you learn the basics and uh, start to understand how different aspects of the game work. So we all kind of have to go through it. Really nice, clean and precise and highly informative JSG Gaming says. Uh, Video MDog, you did a great job on this one. Exactly what new player, new players the game needs. Thank you so much. Chunky. It's a chunky one. 
<sighs> Dave says, sadly, they never change much of anything to the Winding River. Some say the river is, wide, is wider, but nothing more. Yeah, it's definitely wider in spots, and it definitely has some new things in the water, and it's definitely got new storefronts and stuff like that. Some cosmetic change to some of the buildings, too. Some layouts. I thought they were going to redo the entire water system like they did Mosquito. No, that was never... That was never the plan. From the first time that they talked about redoing winding and showed pictures, you could tell from the pictures that it was going to be much more minimal changes. I personally think that uh, some of it was just to make more sense with fly fishing. I think eventually we'll be fly fishing at winding, but we shall see. That may or may not be correct. Uh, Dave goes on to say... Uh, it's a big disappointment. It's kind of like their announcement for this update. Update Winding River Water Body, whatever we else thought this was going to be. Some thanks for helping out new players. Someone needs to or they'll be stuck at Mosquito asking a million questions and me get lucky to get one or two replies back. Sounds like you've had a rough experience there, Dave. I hope that everyone's experience is not like that. Uh, I was happy they added new features. Sorry, this is a response to that comment. Kinesai says, I was happy they added new features in the water, more reeds, tree trunks, etc. Yeah, I agree. It's a little bit more interesting place to fish, it looks like now. Makes it a little easier for new players to target those spots where fish might be hiding. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, let's see. Arn says, I got one problem though, trophies. I've troll I've trolled and walked around mosquitoes several times and still missing perch, eyed, and frogs. Ooh, I don't know. This past week has been a there have been a lot of eyed trophies caught here this past week. Um, but I haven't gone for them myself, so I'm not exactly sure uh, what that's about. But you can look on some of the resources like the VK site and other sites to see if you can find out more info. Mesdorf says do it on pro kits. I don't know if we'll go pro kits or not. Definitely go beginner kits for spent for uh, feeder. And Razor says I'm not in the camera. Don't look at me. That's funny. Ba uh, Babinock says nice guy. Thank you, Babinock. Thank you very much. And that was just on episode one. Let's see if uh, anything else stands out comment wise from the other episodes that might be helpful to talk about, especially if there are any questions that might be worth considering. I don't know, should we move back to the, to the regular spot here? Are we actually changing our performance or is it the same? It's probably the same. Um, good thing you brought up the ghost snags. Most people don't realize your feeder sinker selection actually does matter. If you don't select it correctly, you can get stuck on the bottom. Exactly, OMG. Uh, that's what I was really wanting to point out, and I'm glad that it actually messed me up because it was a good example of of how that works. Th those are actually not ghost snags. Those are just uh, your feeder cage is too strong for your rig power, basically, um, or your feeder cage is too heavy, I should say. All right, we're going to try back over here. We're going to go seven clip. Just see. I think it'll be the same or basically the same. Um but I mean we did catch a trophy so let's don't mess with what worked before right at least at night if you are a low level player I think it's going to be hard to beat this spot at least until you can start catching bream and stuff Brian says, what can you do to reliably make silver on RF4? Yeah, I mean, one person answered says, constantly check VK and other resources to find hot spots. I mean, I think that's right. I think allowing the community to help you as well-known spots come up is a good idea. I also think there's, it's kind of weird in this game, like if you get too focused on silver, um, you just sort of get frustrated. I, I think it's actually more just like, Try to just enjoy the game, enjoy the fishing. Uh, certainly find fun places to fish, fun spots to fish for. The silver is going to come. 
uh, but it doesn't come fast. I mean, this is a this is a game that takes a um, takes a lot of hours to sort of level level from the early maps to the late maps. It takes a lot of hours to level up all of your stats and techniques. I mean, this is a this is a fishing simulation game, but it also has some almost like MMO components to it where it is a grind. It is um, it is something that takes time and it's that's either fun for you or it's not. That's either a good thing or a bad thing according to what your preferences are and your lifestyle, how much time you have. Babinock says, I always forgot about the cottage freebies. Yeah, co cottage freebies are nice. Thank you for another great episode. I've never seen a real breakdown as yours did. Probably a grass carp. Is this the episode where my reel actually broke? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I broke the reel on a um, getting stuck on the bottom and not having a strong enough reel to pull the, the weight of the feeder cage in. Uh, it was more user error. I don't think it was a fish at all. Trying to get back to where that happened in the video. I think this is it, isn't it? Hold on. Let's, uh, let's reflect. Yeah, that's exactly where it happened. Okay, so we have at this point. I would think. All right. I think we go to pick up our. All right, let's clear our rods real quick so that we don't have to listen to the jingle jingle as much. I guess the other thing that's a little nice about having them set up over here is that um, if a big fish did get on, we can kind of scare it off into this direction. Hopefully get it caught, stay up in here as much as possible. Okay, so we go to pick up our feeder here and this one has a fish on. We catch this fish and then I think we check the other one or something and it's stuck on the bottom, right? Or is it when we cast this one back in? Well, let's see. Is it actually a fish on there or? All right, so. Oh no, it's not a fish. You can tell it's just stuck. See, I'm trying to free it because normally if you sort of point right at it, increase your friction break, it'll I don't like the look of this. Let's it'll what it's doing pop here. it up, but then I just overwhelm the spark. I just turn it up too high. I keep trying to reel it in. I mean that mech is just getting worn out. These are like little these are cheaper than Zebcos. I mean this is like you just drop six bucks at Walmart. And here I am like just gonna snap it. I mean, it just like falls apart, basically. All right, we might snap it here. At least I called it. Snap. Look at that full tension crack. So that's what happened. We just broke our reel. Yes, we did. Yes, we did, M Dog. We just broke our reel. Okay, back to the fish. Oh, we got a decent one on here. We got a decent little fella. 1.3, man. And, and again, I know I've talked about this before, but we're getting points on bottom fishing on almost every fish when they're this high quality. 
That's so great. It is so great. Alright, so Arn says, I'm looking forward to this episode. Trophies are something I'm struggling with. Oh, this is from the last episode where we, or two episodes ago where we had the trophy. Uh, yeah, you know what? Trophies will come. Um, a lot of it is, you know, certain spots and bait combinations. You know, you can increase your chances. It's all just RNG, right? It's just random chance. But it also the higher level you get so like if we were 100 percent bottom fishing um that impacts the quality of fish you'll catch the more skill you have if you're bottom fishing or if you're spin fishing or float whatever so you know the higher level you get and the higher skill you get you're naturally going to start seeing higher quality of fish slightly you know the numbers are going to go in your favor a little bit more and more and more you can also do things like if you're using loop rig invest in loop rig gives you a better chance but mostly it's just a it's just a numbers game right you're just trying to put all of the factors uh line them up in in a way that is an advantage to you so that uh, you have the best chance possible for pulling off pulling out that trophy Bavinox said on another video said um, shovel is your best friend mole crickets rhinos cock shafers all useful later on yeah once you unlock those but I, I love shoveling from an early level I think it's really smart uh, it gives you a jump start on leveling up your bait harvesting for um, very little if not you know it's almost free just the cost of the shovel and then the tea so you early on you're getting points in harvesting baits without spending much silver on it uh, at some point you're going to get impatient and i always do as well you're going to want to start like okay let's use some silver let's buy some uh let's buy some more bread buy some potato cubes we just got to unlock pearl barley and once you unlock that you know it's like okay well let's make make these so we can unlock these <laughs> And yeah, you can still get points by shoveling occasionally, but it comes becomes less and less. So eventually it's just like, okay, let's just spin the silver, make the bait. You'll use the bait eventually. Most of those baits are really good baits at different times. So um, it's really just setting aside some silver and, and getting through it. And of course, if you have premium, uh, the higher level you get in skills, the more premium will help you like get over the hump on actually leveling up those skills. You, you get you get skill ups more often with premium certainly using happy hour to your advantage So we're at 10.3. How many red worms have we gathered now? Nine. Well, if this is a gibble or a crucian, it is a nice one. Now remember, we don't have any energy, so that makes it seem a little worse than it is, but this looks like a pretty good fish overall. Nice fat gibble, just over a kilo. Solid two three silver fish right at least let's see if our energy is still moving up from the last tea we drank or if we need to do it again yeah still moving
this is the ideal time overnight in general is good but I would say from like 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. just should have a nice decent bite rate with fairly reliably fat crucian gibbles we still haven't put the the last fluorocarbon leader. I think it's on the middle rod we need to slap it on. And here's our chance. Yay. We got it. Oh, what was that? Frog jump? Not seen a frog jump back here. Sounded more like a frog jump than a fish jump, didn't it? You do have that frog that jumps at the uh, the winding pond, or at least it used to. I don't know if it still does. Let me down now. Don't let me down at this uh, critical time. At four to seven. I think we could have stayed at the other sp I mean I don't think that moving back over here has significantly changed this spot so we, we're probably would be fine fishing from the other angle a little less annoying in the weeds over here Well, nibble, nibble. Ten point five. 
10.5% on harvesting baits. It's like it's like mid bite there on that middle rod especially Level 10. So you see all of the shovel ones share the same. So we don't have to put points in all the different types of things you shovel for. Just, just one of them and it goes across all of them. But we should start to see the number of worms that we gather increase and also the quality so red worms hopefully more often as well <clears throat> all right well we'll give it a couple more minutes here and then we will we will call it we will call it what i'd like to do i mean i guess we it just makes sense to go ahead and get our three basic feeder setups put together. I would also love to do a little bit of spin fishing here and there at Belaya. Sorry, not Belaya, at um, Winding. Um, so I don't, I just don't know exactly when, when I'm comfortable setting aside some silver to put towards spin fishing not that i mean we could get away with just using like you know using one of these free setups and probably still catch a few fish with the right lures but um i don't know it'd also be nice just to like get a basic basic spin setup i wonder how decent the uh, starter spin setup is probably it'd probably work at winding probably be good enough especially once we have uh dug up enough red worms to kind of go crazy with red worms for a while um we could do a combination of worms and red worms i guess we only have nine right now we could also purchase some if if we're you know making reasonable silver on the red worms it might be worth purchasing a couple stacks of them all right it's almost eight i mean we're going to start seeing the fish size kind of go back to, down to normal all right don't mess with that one ah all right fun times Fun times. Let's don't break any more sparks today or this week even. Although, I'm not promising anything. <laughs> you never know. 
You never know with those sparks. Uh, let's see. Always nice to get that order, get rid of those uh, crucians that aren't worth anything. So how did we do in that spot with, uh, oh, not bad. You know, it gets a little boring, but you know, it's like 50 silver at least every time we go there and we're not staying that long. That is really nice. So let's look at the store real quick before we, before we wrap it up. Actually, let's, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Poor fisherman is so hungry. All right. Um, I'm just curious. What's in the basic spinning rod? And we don't want to do light, right? This is, I think the light setup's pretty bad. 2.3. I mean, it'd be fun. It'd be hard to get anything in. I think this is probably what you want to get. That's funny. It comes a little asserty. So you actually could do this. Hold on. Let me think about this. Well, asserty is also what comes in the starter feeder kit, right? Express fishing dynamic. It has to be at least 10 grams. The test. That's a little limiting, isn't it? Because a lot of what we want to use uh, would be like... Well, we can't use ultralight stuff. We can't use ultralight stuff. We'd have to use like this, this these line of hornets, the little bit bigger ones. I guess they'd probably still work, but man, I really like the ultralight ones. Like on the Achilles. We can't use the Achilles at all if the test is 10. So, and, and, but that may be the case on, uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, you may have to get something in the light category to, to be able to do, to, to be able to toss the like really lightweight lures. Maybe that's just the case. Um, and I just haven't done it. Now this is interesting. It's a little bit more expensive. This one has a 4.7 kilo load capacity. You at least go down to six. It's medium. This one starts at four, but it only goes up to 2.8. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it is some fascinating stuff. Um, we'll just have to look at it, think about what we want to do. We do have some nice silver to kind of start playing around with, though. Probably get our first feeder, um, which would be nice. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Look forward to seeing you again next time. Peace out.